Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our first Intuition AAT Level 4 Professional Synoptic Revision Session. My name is Ben Bullman. I am a tutor and a director at First Intuition. I'm going to be taking the session this evening. In a moment, I will share with you on the screen a task. This is a task written by First Intuition to try and replicate what you might come across in the, the AAT Level 4 Professional Synoptic Assessment. I'm joined tonight by a live group of students, so fantastic numbers for the first revision session back for this year, 2021. I've got 60 students logged in live, but obviously if you're watching the recording, you can also join in, you can shout out. The guys that are with me this evening live can use the chat box if they want to communicate or talk to me or share ideas and share answers. So if we're all ready, shall we have a look at the task that we've got lined up this evening? So I'm just going to share my screen. Bear with me one second. OK, so we're going to look at an example of a task three this evening. Now, remember, this task has been written by us at First Intuition. It's not authorized. It's not approved. It's not written by the AAT. So we can't categorically guarantee this is exactly what your task three is going to look like. But we do get insight from the AAT feedback from them. So we try to write the scenario questions in the style and covering the areas that we would expect you to potentially come across when you sit your live AAT assessment. As you should be aware, the AAT assessments for the level four synoptic are now looking at a different business scenario. The information that you will be given, but you will also have access to in advance, is on a business called Veggie Delights. If you've not heard of Veggie Delights before, it should be the information in your, your study pack. But I will also make sure that the scenario for Veggie Delights is shared with you on an email by Emma for the revision sessions, because I think we've got a PDF copy that, that, that she can include on any email correspondence to our revision class students. Does that make sense, everybody? Are we all happy of the, the, the style of the professional synoptic, the fact that you do get the business scenario in advance? Don't need to do loads and loads of work on it, but it does just place the assessment within the context of a business that you can then link ideas back to or at least think about when you are answering the tasks in the live assessment. Right, the task three we've got this evening this would be the equivalent of 15 marks worth of, of points within the assessment. Remember, this task will be marked by a real AAT human assessor. They will read what you have written. It is a written task. So really 15 marks as you're writing it, you need to make sure that you are writing enough separate points, enough detail, enough content for the marks to, to come through when the assessor is grading you, when they are ticking off your points. When the email comes round with the link to this evening's recording, I will also get Emma to send you a copy of this task if you wanted to have another practice of it once we've looked at it this evening with the ability to watch the recording as you are doing it as well if you want to. OK. Before we get in and read a little bit about the detail, one of the big tips I would normally suggest to students are that they, they read the requirement of any scenario question before they jump straight in and do it. So here at the top of the next page, we have got what we're actually going to be required to do and required to answer this evening. It says, in respect of the internal controls of Veggie Delights, well, we'll do a quick chat about internal controls in a moment in general. But then it says, particularly in respect of the internal controls of Veggie Delights. And as we're going to see in a second, when we go back up, we've been given some information about some of their internal processes, their internal controls. We've been asked to identify and explain five weaknesses in the systems at Veggie Delights from the information provided. So weaknesses are things that they are not doing, we would expect them to be doing, or things that they are doing that, that currently would not work or we would presume would not be robust enough to actually prevent 
errors, system issues, processing issues, theft, fraud, that sort of stuff. And that links very nicely to the second part of this evening's task, where for each weakness, so it's going to be an identify and an explain, and then for each one alongside it, we need to say how it might cause Veggie Delight's problems. So what are going to be some of the practical implications for the business if these things are happening or not happening, as we'll see in a moment? OK, so before we jump in and look at the particular internal controls for this scenario, Veggie Delights in a moment when we go back up, what sorts of things would we want internal controls to prevent and detect anybody? In the back of your mind, it's good to have ideas because quite often it will be the same sorts of things that come up in these scenarios within the assessment. So if you are running a business, what sorts of things do you want to prevent, to stop happening or to identify so you know it is going on as soon as possible? So lots of good ideas coming through on the chat box. If you're watching the recording, you can shout out like a, a, a crazy person at a screen. But, but please do that. But if you're with me live tonight, fantastic that you're using the chat box. So I can see quite a few ideas coming through. I can see people talking about fraud. One of the things that we want the systems to prevent or detect is anyone that is fraudulently taking money, concealing theft. So, yeah, fraud is a good one. Um, theft as well. So that's kind of linked. But yet yeah, we want systems that should prevent people being able to steal, either steal money or steal other assets from the business. We want it to prevent errors as well. Yeah, we certainly do. We want our systems, our controls to prevent errors being made within the, the records. We want errors with regards to missing recording transactions or maybe duplication where things are recorded in error twice. Fantastic. And what you've given me there is a very good group of financial system based controls. And I would expect that from a group of nearly qualified AAT accountants because you're right at the end of your studies now at this unit. And they are the sorts of things that I would expect in, in class that, that, that I would be given by a group of students. So things around financial crime, fraud, theft, for example, things around recording of financial transactions. But in this assessment, you can broaden it out a bit, as well as just thinking about the, the direct financial or financial reporting consequences. You can think about things to do with the quality of the product or service that the business does. Now, if you haven't looked at Veggie Delights yet as your scenario, Veggie Delights are, are a restaurant producing food for customers. So you can think about anything that impacts on the quality of that or the customer experience. You can think about anything that happens that, that might mean they have got too much or too little inventory. Merlin's raised a good point there, delivery. So anything to do with the, the dispatch and problems within the supply chain. You can think about implications with regards to running out of money or not collecting cash in time or, or not having sufficient cash to pay people. So poor cash flow might be something that we want to prevent. Alison's saying a really great point, health and safety breaches. So we want internal systems and controls to prevent anyone getting hurt or getting injured or getting food poisoning in this scenario if it's a restaurant. So that's tip one for do I've tip two, actually, because tip one for tonight was to make sure you go and read the requirement, what you actually are going to be asked to do before you go and read the detail. Tip two from Ben tonight is to just broaden your ideas a bit in this assessment. Don't just think necessarily about the financial or the financial reporting implications. They will be there and they are natural for you to come up with based on what you, you know and what you do and what you study. But also for this assessment, think beyond that. Some of them might not be directly to do with their accounting records. It might be to do, as I say, with the quality of their goods or services, with the delivery of their goods or services, with legal requirements. Dasha, exactly right. Non-financial as well as financial. Brilliant. OK, let's go back and have a look then. So what you will usually find in any kind of assessment question task with, with, with this kind of weaknesses internal controls there's probably way more than you've been asked to comment on 
Specifically, it says five weaknesses. Now, really, to maximize your chances of passing and being competent in this assessment, you need to at all possible come up with five because you will be marked down if you don't. And we've got separate boxes. So blank boxes in this one are a big no, no. Try and make sure you've got enough separate ideas and enough time to get those ideas down. But likewise, you will probably come up with more than five points. And what you've then got to try and do is think, right, which are the five that I am most confident I can talk about? I can say the most detailed points on. So there are no marks for being the clever clogs that pick something that's obscure. I would focus on the five most obvious points that jump out at you. And, and that's a skill, really, as you're going through. The more that you practice these kind of tasks, the more that you will see similar themes come up time and time and time again. So we've really got two stages to this task. We've got to identify and explain each weakness. That's really reading in a moment what we're going to be told about the business and identifying where their controls may be failing. What are they not doing or what would we expect them to be doing? And then explain that. So that's really largely copying bits back out of the information you've been given, just kind of picking out the, the key salient points. And then the second part over here, and we're going to do this alongside each one for part two, is for each weakness, we've got to explain how it may cause veggie delights problems. So what is actually going to be the impact or the implication on the business? Is it going to cause them to run out of money? Is it going to mean they might experience fraud or theft and therefore loss of money? Is it going to damage the quality of the, the product that they are making? OK, let's go back then. As I say, I will get Emma to send this task round so you can have a, a look at it in your own time when you're doing separate study. But for tonight, I will keep it on the screen. I will be able to highlight bits of it and, and, and add bits to our answer as we go along. But I'm going to kind of read it alongside with you. So it says you've been asked to review the adequacy of the controls for Veggie Delights sales procedures. So specifically, we are thinking about any implication to do with recording sales, to do with the product that's being sold, to do with receiving the money for that sale. You've discovered the following information. It says the company uses a non integrated accounting system due to many locations of the restaurants in the southeast of England. What do you understand by this term non integrated system? And extending that question to you, what might be some of the issues that a business experiences if their system is not integrated? What, what does integrating a parts or, or areas or locations of a system actually mean anybody? Ideas in the chat box. If you're watching the recording, just take a moment to think about that for yourselves. Um, good ideas coming through. Each area might have their own system. The areas are not joined up. They might be using slightly different systems, not centralized is good, um, not computerized, maybe. Would you agree not integrating the accounting system could cause errors, could mean information is missed, information is not checked. There is a much higher risk of human error. Now, I'm not going to start writing my answer. And in fact, we might not even write out a full answer for all five this evening. We'll see how we're doing for time. That's something you can go away and have a go at when Emma sends you the task. But that's definitely one I've highlighted. Now, this is my third tip for this evening. If at all possible in your exam venue, please try and make sure that you have got a piece of paper on your desk. I know some assessment centres don't allow that, but as far as I'm aware, the guidance is that the AAT say you, you can have a piece of paper and a pen in the exam room with you. Who has a piece of paper and a pen in the exam location where they sit? I appreciate we've got students joining me tonight from across the country. Sarah's saying always. Um, Claire saying always brilliant. Marta saying, yeah, uh, FI Reading, great to hear another FI centre. Big up to my friends and colleagues across in Reading. They're a great group of tutors over there. Um, brilliant. 
FI Leeds, Mergen, again, another group of my, my FI extended network and family, very, very close to our guys up in Leeds. Brilliant. If you are allowed a piece of paper, this is where I would be noting them down. I can highlight on the screen this evening, which is great. But for you guys, I'd be noting down non-integrated accounting system as my point number one. Might use that in my answer. How many did I need? Remind me, how many separate points do we need to get for our answer this evening? Five. Fantastic. You were all listening. So if I get to the bottom of this and I've only got five written down, I'm going to have to go with this one. But but if I've got more than five, this might be one that I think, well, there might be better five points than this one in a moment. But I'm going to keep it highlighted for now. We'll come back and see which ones we maybe would pick on. OK, it says Connor said in the commercial manager is not responsible for accounting for sales, but for business generation. Tommy Mills is the regional and only cashier. Right. Then we've got some bullet points. So the first one says customers in the restaurants. So if you're still getting to grips with Veggie Delights, they run a, a chain of restaurants and they will clearly have customers that come in for their meals. It says anyone can purchase vegetarian food for cash or using a debit or credit card. Well, that sounds pretty standard, what we would kind of expect in a restaurant environment. Um, oh, brilliant point. I've just seen someone in the chat box pick out another point. And this is what I mean, that the scenarios are usually littered with points. We've got another point from someone. I'm just going to just going to big them up and name check them. Um, brilliant. Dasha and Timmy and others are now saying it as well. I'd miss that one. It just goes to show there's more here than we could possibly need in our answer. Tommy Mills is the regional and only cashier. Um, it's quite a dangerous position for the business to be in, only having one cashier. One cashier means there is a lack of segregation of duties. So ideally, cashier implies they're going to be cashing up. Um, one person doing that might be able to disguise theft and fraud. So it would be preferable to have two. Also means if you've only got one person that does any task full stop, that there is a risk if that person was ill, that person was on holiday, who is responsible for covering. Brilliant point, guys. Well done. You're, you're really getting in the swing of these kind of scenarios and trying to pick holes in what the organization is currently doing. Right, let's keep reading the next bullet point then. So we said anyone can purchase vegetarian food for cash or using a debit or credit card. When sales are made, the till records of all transactions on the till roll. So standard till, record the, the sale on the till roll, the piece of paper that rolls through the till that keeps a record of everything that has been sold. It says in peak periods when restaurants are busy, sometimes till rolls run out. Well, that's natural. They run out of paper and newly recruited staff do not have the knowledge to change the till roll. Who thinks that might be a weakness for the business that could cause them problems? Brilliant. So a lot of people saying that the, the, the till roll needs to be replaced quickly. Other people saying they could use some kind of computerized till system that, that keeps a computer log, not a paper log. Great idea. The key point is if those till rolls run out and they are not changed in time, that means there is either going to be a delay to sales being made you can't sell something if you can't ring it up into the till or probably more likely, if I'm honest with you, that the sale is made. It's just not rung into the till or recorded. So I would say the potential um, issue there is sales might not be recorded if the till roll has run out and therefore there is no record of what's been sold. Does that make sense, everybody? Are we happy with those? Look at this. We're only in the first couple of paragraphs and we've already potentially got three separate points for our answer. So it doesn't look like you guys as a group and this scenario, we're going to be short on ideas. Let's keep going. It says some customers still pay by check. These are kept in a separate drawer within each restaurant and banked by Tommy Mills. We know he's our sole cashier every week or two. Who can tell me a potential problem in that bullet point for the business?
checks might bounce. So checks may be not the most um, secure form of receiving money. Checks physically have to be taken to a bank to present and pay them in. And the fact that they are taking up to two weeks potentially means those checks are not sitting in their bank account as cleared items. So there's cash flow issues. Fantastic point. A few of you have said that in the chat box. Cash flow issues, as well as what might happen to those checks between us receiving them from the customer and then being taken to the bank. Lost exactly Sarah and Alison and Emma said stolen. Yeah, probably more likely to get lost. Uh, uh, unlikely people would steal a check because they shouldn't be able to pay in under their own name. But who knows? Sophisticated fraudsters might I think it's more important there that the checks uh, might get lost. They might get missed and therefore we never get the money. Can't go back to the customer and, and reclaim it because it's a restaurant. It's not the sort of thing that they can do. Brilliant. So we've got another point there if we need one. Remember, we only needed five, but we need to keep reading. I would encourage you. Remember my tip number three. I would be noting these down as numbers on my piece of paper in the exam. And then when I've got them all down and I've got to the bottom of this, I'm going to go back and like tick the ones. I need five that I'm going to tick and say I'm going to talk about that one and then that one and then that one and then that one and then that one. And there will be other things that we don't need to talk about. We don't need to comment on every single piece of information as long as we've got five that we have explained well enough and thought about the impact on the business. OK, my third bullet point says at the end of each day, when the restaurant has been cleaned, prepared for the following day and closed to customers, the staff leave. The restaurant manager or assistant manager then cashes up the till. Money is counted and reconciled to the till roll. Well, I don't mind the money being counted and reconciled to the till roll. Who can tell me the obvious problem with that third bullet point, please? Shout out at home if you are watching the recording or type into the chat box. Brilliant. So lots of people saying the problem there is it is reliant on just one person doing that cashing up exercise and having one person cashing up is a very dangerous position for the business to be in, because if we're giving them the benefit of the doubt, one person might make an error that is not noticed. But if we are thinking more sinisterly, one person might be stealing money and then faking or fiddling or fudging, or the word I would use is committing fraud in the cashing up process and actually concealing that theft and fraud by manipulating the cashing up results. So the issue there is a lack of two people, a lack of, you can use the term segregation of duty, splitting the task between two, or you could just say we need at least two people present during that cashing up exercise. The more people that are involved in that process or have oversight of it, the less likely there is of theft because one person would hopefully check up on the other. There would be some kind of whistleblowing. Brilliant. The other one Alison's raised is security and safety. So one person on their own would be seen as quite vulnerable, wouldn't they? If people knew, if, if criminals knew that only one person was there when all of the cash was being counted, that might mean that they would target this business to say there is a potential security issue. Fantastic. Marta, spot on. We've got five already. So we've got enough if we really needed to. But I would encourage you to read all of it and then pick your best five. There might be one that is really, really obvious down here and one that you know you could say loads about. Pick the ones that you can write the most on, not the ones that come first in the scenario or the ones that um, you think are the, the cleverest spots. Go with the obvious ones. OK, the fourth bullet point this evening says cash is banked at the end of each week by Tommy Mills, the regional cashier, who can tell me the problem with banking the cash once a week. Good. So Dash is saying cash flow issues. They would want the cash in their bank more regularly because that would improve their cash inflow, that their, their, their recorded um, cash receipts would be in the bank quicker. But I think the bigger issue is they must have more cash on the premises, surely. If you've got a whole week's worth of cash 
on the premises up until the time Tommy takes it to the bank. If you get a robbery on the day before it's all banked, you could lose a significant amount of money. Cash is very, very high risk from theft, isn't it? If we're being brutally honest, it is the root of most criminal theft. Criminals want cash. And if they can steal cash, that is preferable to them. So the longer the cash is on the premises, the more risk that they lose a substantial amount of money if there was ever a theft. Ideally, cash should be banked daily. If it can't be banked at the end of the day, it should at least be stored in a secure safe. But with these kind of cash based businesses, restaurants, pubs, anyone got any experience of this in the real world? Anyone ever worked for a retailer, a restaurant, a bar? Um, I would imagine cashing was taken to the bank very, very regularly, maybe even multiple times a day. Ryan worked at Tesco's. Always fascinates me in, in supermarket checkouts where the cash and it must tell that the, the, the cashier on the till, we need to take some of this cash out because you've got more than we would allow you to have in the till now. And it all gets sent off in those little tubes, doesn't it? And go to Securacore or G4S to come and collect it and take it to the bank. Fantastic. So just to reinforce that one, banking the cash once a week is, is far less regular than it needs to be. Ideally, we'd want every day. The implication for the business is they could lose much more money if there was a theft. They could lose a whole week's worth of cash takings as opposed to a day's. Also, the risk that it gets damaged, it gets stolen, there's a fire. Perfect. Okay. Well, we've clearly got enough now if we needed to to answer the question, but let's keep going. So it goes on to say customers on the website, for those of you that don't know the scenario, they can also accept orders and, and process bookings via the website. So it says customers must enter debit and credit card number before the order is processed. I kind of think that's OK. Customers are responsible for entering all their details properly. And these details are not verified. What's the problem if there is no check to verify the debit card number, the credit card number, the details that have been given by a customer on the website? Stolen cards can easily be used, Juliet. Yes, they can. Sophisticated online fraudsters could target this business. Incorrect details, yet yeah, the money might not be collected. The funds might never be released by the credit card company. And therefore, there is a loss of income and a loss of, of money for the business. So, yeah, ultimately, Aga, you're right. They might never get paid for the goods. So ultimately, we would expect the website to have some kind of check in. And these days, websites where people can pay by card are very sophisticated at check in. You will have seen that if you've paid stuff. And I'm sure most of you have on, on a website where it will take a few moments just to check the details. You will have to give the matching credit card number with the expiry date or the three digit card number on the back or the that the name on the card. And, and it all gets checked out to make sure that they are verified and the person paying for the card has given all of the right details for this to be a legitimate transaction and the money being collected. Could use PayPal, etc. Ryan. Yep. So they might offer that up as well. Exactly. Right. But if you didn't like the sound of that one, that's one that you think, oh, that that sounds though a bit woolly. I'm not sure I'm going to explain myself well enough. If you've got five others, don't pick that one. This is what I'm saying. My tip number three, remember, write your points down quickly as you're going through and then pick your best five, the five that you can say the most about. OK, other points. So we've still got more scenario to go. A few other points. If we were struggling for five, we've got another chance to get some more here. So it says the expansion of Veggie Delights into multiple restaurants has meant that additional staff have had to be recruited to manage the increased operational activity. Well, that's not a weakness in itself. It's a good thing that they're growing and they've had to recruit more staff. But it then goes on to say in the second sentence, due to the speed of recruitment, references have not been thoroughly checked. On a few occasions, the shift manager of the Christchurch restaurant has received complaints from customers about being overcharged, but he has not noticed any overcharging in the daily cashing up. Right. What might be a weakness within the systems here, anybody? 
background checks not correctly done. So it might mean that they have not got the quality of staff. They might have actually recruited staff that have previously had issues with theft or fraud at a previous employment that would have flagged up in those references or those background checks. So I'm going to highlight references not being thoroughly checked. I think that's an issue because the people they have employed might not have the best background, might have a history of fraud, theft from previous employments that they are not aware of and have been given the job. And the fact that we have got some subtlety here saying receiving customer complaints about being overcharged, but not noticed any overcharging in the cashing up might imply that the, the scrupulous staff members are overcharging customers, but pocketing some of that money and recording a lower value sale in the books of the business. Does that make sense, everybody? So maybe a bit of theft going on, some collusion could cause very bad reputational impacts for the business. Love it, Hanny. A great implication point that the business might suffer a bad reputation on the back of the, the quality or the integrity of the staff they have employed. Our next bullet point says customer complaints regarding food quality are extremely rare at Veggie Delights. The manager of one restaurant has been concerned because he received an increase of 8% in complaints from the delivery of meals that have been booked online. This has been due to food quality, not website issues. So an 8% increase in complaints is quite sizable, isn't it? That implies there might be issues with the quality of the meals that are being provided that again is going to have potential reputational implications, bad delivery service, maybe cash flow implications. If we keep reading, if they've got to refund or compensate people for the poor quality, the bad service they have had. Could be issues within the supply chain as well. We're, we're talking about food, so it could be issues with the, the, the ingredients, the raw materials and a big loss of customer goodwill. All fantastic points and trying to get this into a full point, putting in as many of those ideas and, and a rounded answer as possible is, is fantastic. It says to resolve complaint issues quickly and to uphold the excellent reputation and customer loyalty. It is Veggie Delight's policy to either issue a credit note that can be used against a future order or give the customers a cash refund of 80 percent of the sales value. The manager has monitored the complaints and identified the majority of these complaints have resulted in a request for cash refunds. So clearly the impact of this on the business is also going to be one of cash flow. They are not retaining sufficient funds for the, the meals they are selling. It's going to have an implication on the business. The cash refund might not be recorded, Claire. Might also be, and this is where there is a bit of a, a subtle one thrown in. If you realize that you complain and you get a refund, no quibble, pretty quickly of 80% of the sales value, what might the business be experiencing? Brilliant, Liz. Are they genuine complaints? There might be an issue that the complaints are not being authorized. It says to issue resolve the issue quickly. They just give the refund. But there might be the implication that actually the customers now are abusing this or some kind of collusion with customers, Merlin, or, or some kind of fake complaints to to um really rip off the business for want of a better term. So I think there's certainly one there. Alison, you're right. I think managers should have to authorize the refund and that the nature of the complaint should be reviewed for that purpose to make sure that there is some formal substance behind it. Perfect. Right. The last bullet point, Veggie Delight strategic plan includes the development of new meal choices. Nina Proctor, the development chief, has made a new vegan dish and it's currently being trialed in all restaurants. Nina calculated the cost per portion and then gave the restaurant managers an indication of the selling price. In normal circumstances, Sergei Dashdemirov, the regional operations manager, would calculate the blanket selling price. However, he is on a month long cruise with his family. 
it's now come to light that an incorrect selling price was used. The price was too low since not all costs related to the new vegan, vegan dish had been considered. So clearly an issue for a business. How much do we sell our products for? Um, what's the weakness that we've identified there? Quite a mouthful, that paragraph, lots of information. But what do we think the business has done wrong or maybe shouldn't have done in that situation? Brilliant. So lots of people saying no proper cover. The guy that normally sets the prices is away for a month and it doesn't look like anyone else has been trained enough to do it. The fact that it's been done by a development chef who has ultimately calculated the cost per portion, someone suggesting it very much, and we can big up our own profession here, should that calculation have actually been reviewed by someone within the accounts, the finance team? I doubt a chef, and, and who knows, because actually I've had chefs that have done accounting qualifications with us over the years, but my presumption would be that the development chef maybe hasn't got the financial skills to, to calculate that calculation or certainly to give her the benefit of the doubt might have made a genuine error that's just not been picked up so we would be saying really that cost calculation should have been reviewed by someone within the finance team the finance department someone who was a senior in finance that could have maybe spotted an error what's the impact of the business what's the impact on our business if the selling price has been set too low and nobody has spotted that for a period of time? Loss making, perfect. You can bring it back to your financial impacts some of the time, certainly. Clearly, that's not a good way to run the business. They have lost revenue on the back of that, brilliant. And that means that they have failed to cover their costs and therefore have been loss making on these dishes. And that's not a sustainable way to run the business. They have lost that revenue and you can't go back, can you? Can't go back now over the last few months of sales and contact all of the customers and say, we think we undercharged you because you can't do that in business. And certainly in this kind of nature of a business being a restaurant. Wow, wow, wow. We've got to the end of this scenario. And I think we have found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably at a push. Hanny was keeping count as well. We needed five. We need or we need five to go and answer. And five would get us full marks. You won't be able to put in more because the boxes will be limited in the assessment like they are here. So this is where you need to think when you've been noting those down as you were doing your read through in the assessment. What's the, the five to go with? Um, Timmy, I don't. I really think the AAT. Yes, they might not have 10. I think this is us trying to put a bit more in here just to give us stuff to kind of educate students on and talk about. But, but genuinely, I hear from students and in questions that I've seen over the years, there will be certainly more than the five that you would have needed. But clearly, you only get marks for five. Right. I'm going to pick maybe one or two because I'm conscious of the time this evening. Um, but you can then have a go at some of the others. And as I say, when Emma sends out the stuff, I'll make sure she sends out a model answer with, with as many listed out as we, we can possibly kind of identify here. But but let's do at least one answer structure together, because I think that's the, the next skill you need. It's not just a case of being identify the points. It's trying to think, how can we write in the detail that, that would get us as many marks as possible when the assessor reads it. So let's pick one. You don't have to answer them even in order when you're doing your answers. I would go with the best one first. I'm going to go with the till rolls one, I think, for the, the first point in, in our answer. So if you remember, the till rolls issue was in this paragraph here, it says in peak periods when restaurants are busy, sometimes till rolls run out and newly recruited staff do not have the knowledge to change the till roll. So if I was putting this in my point, the first bit is to identify and explain the weakness. So I am going to say um, new or junior staff 
don't have the knowledge to change the till rolls. This shows a lack of training. Would you agree? When would you expect a new member of staff to be given their training on something as, as obvious as changing the till roll? Would you expect that to happen pretty soon after they have joined the business? First week. What's what's a fancy term? Oh, Pina's put it into the chat box. I was going to try and prompt for that term, Pina, but you, you beat me to it. Induction. So this shows a lack of training and basic induction of new starters. Perfect. Um, there we go. New junior staff don't have the knowledge to change the till roll. This shows that a lack of training and basic induction of new starters. Now we've got to think about why this is a problem. It says for each weakness, explain how it might cause veggie delights problems. What were some of the problems we identified from this delay in changing the till roll? I would say this causes delays in sales recording or could mean sales are made without the income being recorded on a till roll. This could result in errors when agreeing the cash at the end of the day. It may also mean income is misrecorded in the accounting records. Brilliant. Unable to reconcile, no audit trail. They're probably stuff we could put over this side, actually. Um, Without a till roll record, there is a lack of audit trail. So that's the, the weakness. The problems are um, the income might not be recorded. Errors when agreeing the cash at the end of the day. Marksman income. What's another practical error? If, if the, the member of staff operating the till can't do it, who are they going to have to call over to do the, the, the changing of the till roll? The manager, what's that going to mean for the, the business? Does that mean they're going to be quick at taking the customer's money and giving them a receipt? Delay. Brilliant. Um, so... If a manager is needed, this will delay the transaction. Is that good for the business's reputation? What do you think the customer's view of this would be? Bad, Ryan. Agreed with you. So this delay will impact on the customer and damage reputation for speed of service. Nothing more frustrating. I, I, I appreciate this more so than ever now. I've got two kids that, that when you've paid, sometimes you just want to get out of there pretty quickly. And actually, if you've got to wait for this to all be changed and to call the manager over, you can imagine this is not reflecting well on the business. So there's my point that not all of the problems necessarily result in financial issues or accounting record issues. Always think about things to do with the reputation, the customer experience, the quality of what the business is doing. Fantastic. 
Um, guys, we could keep going on that one. What you've got to do is say, look, enough's enough on that point. I've got a couple of good points. I would be disappointed if an assessor couldn't give me near enough full marks here. We're kind of looking the way they've broken down the marks in this task, two marks for the identify and explain. So I think you're going to get one if you've just identified something that's on their list of things that you could have said with an explanation. What actually is causing the problem? And then on the other side, you've got to think about the problem specifically for veggie delights. What might this cause? What what is the implication of it? Brilliant. Does that make sense? Does that give you an idea of the structure? Is that stuff that you think, do you know what? I think I could have come up with those points. Just look, though, at the, the level of detail. One of my observations, and I've marked enough mocks for our students over the years on, on professional synoptic, um, is sometimes students just put, I, I've seen it where it would just be the first kind of line there and then one line of response. Look at the, the volume. The more you can subtly get into your answers there, the more you can write, the more likely you are that the assessor is going to be able to give you those extra marks. There's no what we call negative marking, that they won't award minus marks for wrong things. So the more you can put, the better. I always encourage my students to put as much as they possibly can do in there. But look at the way I've structured it. I've spaced it out a bit. I've put some line spaces in there just so it's a bit easier to read and helps me think about a couple of separate points in there. Um, Caroline, how long would you expect on this type of question? That's a good point. Um, one of the things you need to do is just kind of manage your time across the whole exam. Have you looked at a whole mock together yet, Caroline? It's very hard to do that or say that specifically for you. And it's quite an individual thing for a student to kind of break that down. But my advice would be to do a whole mock with a stopwatch out or use an Alexa or something to time it and kind of say, look, the basic premise is work out how long you've got for the whole exam and then how many marks are available for all of the tasks in total and then divide it through, if that makes sense. So I think that will come. It's something that I'm sure Emma will work on in a further revision session. But that's my advice usually to students. Try and work out, first of all, how long you've got in total, how many marks there is in the whole assessment in total, and then split it out. And you could work out pro rata how much time you should be allocating to a 15 mark question. Shall we do one more together for this evening? And then when you get this through, you can have a go at writing out your own for, for the others. So let's go for the, the cashing up one, because I think that's a fairly regular one that, that you might see quite often. So it says here at the end of each day, when the restaurant has been cleaned, prepared for the following day and closed to customers, the staff leave. The restaurant manager or assistant manager then cashes up the till. Money is counted and reconciled to the till roll. So the weakness at the end of the day, cashing up, only one staff member is present. This shows a lack of segregation. And potential for the person to not record the full amount of cash correctly. What was the problem for the business of this one? The problem is, well, fraud or theft by the person cashing up may not be identified as no one else is there to spot or check. What else were people saying the implication? 
Fraud by false representation. Brilliant, Ryan. Yeah, the security of the person, Alison. That was the other one that people have said, haven't we, as well. Only having one person on site with all of the cash also increases the vulnerability to theft, lack of security might be seen as a target for thieves. So it might not be the person actually cashing up that's stealing the money, but if other people know there is one person alone with all of the money and it's being counted, they might actually target this business to come in and do a raid, expecting there only to be the one person there to kind of defend the business. So fantastic. Excellent. Right. Well, there we go. Does that give you an idea? That's the kind of detail that I would be expecting. But obviously, you need to go and do weakness three, four and five in that level of detail. So it's it's a fine balance. I, I appreciate it's not an easy assessment. You need to try and make sure you get five points down for this one, because if you leave one of them blank, clearly you can't get marks for something that has not got an answer in the box. But also for each one, you need to try and just put in that extra bit of detail. So they're the two things really based on this task to work on. Perfect. Um, the pre scene information was only been released at the start of this year, Claire. This is completely brand new. So if your study material is old, certainly anything from 2016. We've had about three updates of this scenario since then. Veggie Delights is the one. So what I will get. Um, Emma to do when she emails you is send you all a PDF of Veggie Delights because if you haven't got that in your study material in your folders that's the one that you need to be looking at for your live assessments in February or beyond for this year. Okay quick recap then of my top tips for this evening before we finish. Number one was to read the requirements before you jump in and read the scenario. There was no point reading all those bullet points until we know what we've actually got to do. Tip two was to make sure you've got a blank sheet of paper on your desk because these kind of scenarios will likely have more points available than you need for your answer. So note them down as you are going through and then you can pick the five for this task or however many you've been asked for that are the best ones, the ones you are most confident to write. Manage your time. Make sure you do fill all the boxes. But also my final tip is to look at the level of detail, try and use a bit of spacing out there within your points, but, but just look at those as illustrations. Thank you all for joining me this evening. If you're watching the recording as well, thank you for watching. Hopefully Emma will be back with you next week for another revision session. And I personally wish you the best of luck with your studies and your success with the exams this year.